So we're going to take a brief look at the multi-ray today and we're going to go through its functionality and its general use uh, and we're going to have a look at a couple of accessories to go with it so we've just got a probe here. So turning on the multi-ray, very simple, press and hold the power button in the centre. It will beep, it will come on and it will go through its startup procedure. Now this can take a little while because as with every gas monitor it takes a while for the gas sensors to actually turn on and warm up properly. So the unit has started and is just going through its sensor warm-up phase now, so we'll just let it do that. The unit has finished warming up now and it's gone through to a fresh air calibration. Now this can be configured in the setup of the unit, so whenever it starts it asks for you to uh, zero the unit in fresh air. Now we'll go ahead and do this. Now you shouldn't do it in an indoor environment for many reasons but particularly on this one is because we have a VOC sensor in place. Now with a VOC sensor if you zero it indoors it artificially elevates the uh, zero point because there's always VOCs knocking around in an indoor environment. So we're going to go ahead and zero this now. So we just click here and press start and it will now do a 60 second zero. So we're just coming out to the end of the 60 second zeroing process now. It will come up and display the results, whether everything's passed or not. So let's just let it flick through. So as you can see, all the sensors have passed on this now. So the unit has zeroed. And now it displays the fresh air calibration readings for you. Once this is completed, it now flicks through to the normal reading screen. So this is support your seat most of the time. Um, and as you can see, this unit is preloaded with several sensors. So we've got oxygen, lower explosive limit, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, VOC sensor. We've also got a second carbon monoxide sensor here, which is essentially uh, because it's a high range CO sensor, whereas this one here is a low range. So it's um, for a very specific application. So if we now were to have a look here, we've got three symbols. So we've got an alarm reset symbol, power symbol, and an across arrow. So if we press the associated button, so the corresponding button to the arrow here is the one below, we can scroll across and you can see now we've got peak values. So this will tell you what peak values you see. And you can clear these quite happily by just pressing clear and saying yes. We have stale values. Now I haven't been running the unit for long enough for stale values to come up. We have TWA values as well. And then we can also go through the other bits and bobs on this unit, which you can see that the date and time here. So if we carry on pressing across, so we have temperature, relative humidity, battery type, so this is a lithium ion, tells me what the battery voltage is, so it's fully charged at 4.09 volts, 100% charge, and it tells us that once it reaches 5%, it will turn off the unit. Current runtime, five minutes and 50 seconds. Previous runtime, one hour and six minutes. And if we carry on through, it basically gives us the status of sensors and what their current setup is. So we keep on going across here. And we now get to a screen which says enter communications mode. Data logging and measurement will pause. Now this is what you need to go into if you want to enter communications with an auto array 2 or if you'd like to talk to the unit on the PC. So if you were to talk to this on a PC, you would say yes. I want to talk to the PC and it drops into communications mode. Now if we press exit here, it takes us back out and carries on going back to the measurements. So this is a general overview of the screens that you'll be seeing on the multi-ray. Um, what we'll be doing now is going into the menu system and I'll be showing you the features of the menu system and how to calibrate the unit. So to drop into the menu system of the unit we have to press and hold the power and no button here so we press and hold for five seconds and it now asks for a password so the default password on all ray units is zero 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 and zero we press done and we now get into the menu system now here we have calibration, measurement readings, alarm settings, data log, Wi-Fi, and general monitor settings. So if we just pop into calibration, we'll just have a look at what's in each menu. So under calibration, here we have fresh air calibration, multi-sensor span, single sensor zero, single sensor span, multi-sensor bump, single sensor bump, calibration reference, so that's changing the calibration reference gas, 
multi-cal select and change span value. So if we come back out of this, under measurements, we can drop in here. So we can turn sensors on and off, change measurement gases, and we've got measurement units. So if we go back again, under alarms, we've got alarm limits, alarm mode, alarm settings, comfort beep, and man down alarm. So if we go back again, under data log, we've got clear data log, change the data log interval, select which sensor to data log, data selection, data log type, and memory full action. And under settings, this is where we can change the contrast, the operator mode, the pump speed of the unit, the zero at start, fast startup, temperature units, language, site ID, user ID, date and time format, and what the actual date and time is. So we also have this nice little feature which is LCD flip. If I turn that on or off, when it's turned on, when I invert the unit, the LCD will flip. As you can see there, which is pretty handy when you're out on site and you're doing certain things with the unit in this configuration. So that's the menu system. Now this unit requires a sensor being replaced, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the sensor and show you how that's done, and then I'm going to take you through the calibration process. So before we replace the sensor, I go into this unit and I turn it off. So we press and hold the power button for 5 seconds, and after 5 seconds the unit will shut down. So, taking the unit apart to get to the sensors is a fairly simple process. So, what you'll need is an Allen key and a crosshead screwdriver. So, And once they're all undone, we just lift off, and you'll see all the sensors exposed. Now I'm going to change the oxygen sensor here, so I've got a spare oxygen sensor. There we go. There's the oxygen sensor this side. Take that out. Take the new one. Plonk it in. And that's the sensor changed. We now put everything back together. So the unit currently needs calibrating, so what we're going to do now is we're going to press power and no. And we're going to drop into the calibration menu. And we're going to select the calibration. And we're going to do a quick fresh air count. Now assume we're outside for this. So it's now finished at zero calibration. So I'll just keep on scrolling through. Everything's passed. I'm displaying the live results for you. And now we want to select multi-sensor span. So we put that on there, and we turn the calibration gas on. And the unit will now start calibrating. Now calibration is now complete on the unit. It's giving live readings what the calibration values are. Pretty much spot on. And now it says we um, need to calibrate the VOC. So now it's the same procedure, but we swap over to 100. What 100 ppm ice fusion need now. That's essentially how you calibrate the multi array. You've seen all the menu systems, you've seen how to calibrate it, you've seen its general use. Um, it's a very good instrument. I would always recommend multi array. They're absolutely tough as old boots. Um, you will not break them. I would highly recommend these over any other multi gas monitor. Anyway, thank you for watching Environmental Science and Technology. If you require any further assistance, please contact us on info at environance.com or alternatively call us on 01904 373 018. Thank you and have a good day.